Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel today for another video on Gran Turismo 7 and I am back with a new setup video for the Mazda at Daytona Road Track for Daily Race C in Group 3. So the reason we're doing a setup for this guy is because I believe this with the setup that I'm running is going to be a lot more consistent and a little bit easier for the majority of people to drive. Plus, this car has incredible fuel saving. This car will gain you so much time just in the pit stop alone. I think that you lot are going to be very happy once you try this setup. I want to hear any comments in the comment section with regards to how this has improved your race pace because I'm really interested to see what people's reaction is to how we've got this car to drive because although it might not be the outright fastest setup, what I have tried to do to the setup is make it as drivable, as consistent and as easy as possible to drive. So it is a very simple car. Now I managed to win three top split daily race seats with this setup. And we also had another driver in the race with us that was not having the best of time on the game recently. But with our setup, he finished right behind us on screen at the moment. You can see P1, myself in obviously my setup. And then P3, the guy who's in P3, actually I think he's got himself into P2 at this stage of the race, was actually the other person using my setup. That is Breeze, otherwise known as Wind on GT Sport. So yeah, hopefully you lot are going to enjoy this. I'm going to try and give you some details of what I do and why I've done it. And I'm going to try and give you some advice for what you can change on the setup. And I'm also going to, after the video, give you some tips for the race. We've got a race video there. I'm going to do it very quick. Just a little five minute video just to give you some tips and pointers for the race on what you should do, how you should, what things you should look out for. So yeah, if you enjoy these videos, hit that like button, hit the subscription button and let me know in the comment section what you think about this setup. Let's get on with it. Okay, so let's take a look at the setup that we are running with the Mazda Group 3 vision car so you can i think a lot of people would have got this car free if you bought certain versions of the game but if not i advise you go and buy this car because i think you're going to get some very good positions in this race um, mainly due to the fuel saving and how easy this setup is to drive so first thing to do is try and get the car power up to around 542 horsepower which is max now mine is at 540 you can get it dead on 542 horsepower if you buy the mid-range turbo now i have chose not to use that and used it as default because i found the drivability a little bit better without that now this is pure preference and um, one thing i will say is that this setup is made without the mid-range turbo so if you put that mid-range turbo on the car i'm not too sure how this car will drive it could be a little bit mm, I, I wouldn't advise it but yeah in terms of um, things you need to buy for this car it's pretty simple you need to buy the ballast from the tuning shop and you also need to buy the um, power um, restrictor so that you can change the power of the car and i've managed to get it to 540 by just making some simple changes you can see there we've altered the power restrictor to 98 and the output adjustment to 98 now i did some testing with this um that seemed to be on the straight a reasonably good way of doing it i did try 100 on one and you know different power outputs and stuff but it seemed to be quite a good way to do it with a bit on each one now it might just be luck of the day with how i was driving on certain situations but that is how i changed that so power is sorted weight pretty simple you just need to add the ballast um you know at whatever point you want so it's 100 ballast now what i've done i have not moved the ballast on this car because this car is not an MR car in, in the way that the Audi R8 is. And, you know, it's not going to be kicking out the rear. This is an FR car. So the engine is already already at the front of the car. So I decided to keep the balance how it is as default. And that's in terms of the weight distribution of the car. So positioning the ballast exactly in the middle. Now, you can alter that a little bit rear if you want a little bit more cornering, you know, a bit more rotation on the car put it a little bit to the rear but do this in very small changes do not do this in very large changes because if you make big changes without um you know without testing it you might find you go too far and you forget where you are so do it in very small changes and you might get that position sorted now with regards to the aero this is one of the first things i do so first thing i ever do with a, a setup is i go out and drive the car i drive it on the default setup and do five or six laps see how the car feels see what you think to your driving style does the car feel like it's oversteering does it feel like it's understeering does it feel incredibly difficult on power does it feel like it's a little bit too tight or like restricted on power does it feel like the car's biting too hard so these are the basic changes that i make first of all on the setup so the first thing that i could tell was that obviously the ride height needed a little bit of change so what i did was i lowered the front down not all the way you can go lower 
Um, the reason I kept it a little bit higher is because of the really fast chicane at the end of the lap going onto the bank section. I think a little bit of a raised front just helps you going through that section in terms of the way the car reacts on the curbs. So we kept that at 57. Now the rear lowered it quite low again, reducing that rake a little bit just to keep a bit more stability on throttle. You're going to find this car is very easy to drive, I believe. So that is one of the reasons why we changed the ride height. Now anti-roll bar again, I use 6.4. Um, I tried, again, quite aggressive on the front. I just found it understeered a bit too much. Just tried a little bit lower, tried different settings, and it just didn't feel right. 6.4 felt like a really good balance for traction and for getting that corner and exit speed and also for the handling of the car. Now, again, I haven't changed the damper settings because this is a setting which is fairly complicated on other games. I know on a set of course and stuff like that, you need telemetry to do that. So I've decided to keep it as default for now. We can come back to that at a future date when we're a little bit more aware of how you know the changes impact the car but they are settings that you really in theory should need something like motec for which we don't have on playstation so that is just going to be a trial and error thing in the future but for a baseline setup i don't think you need to touch touch them things really at the moment so in regards to the natural frequency again i lowered these both down seems to give a little bit more traction seems to me a, a more drivability with them a little bit lower now camber angle I increased the rear higher than the front. I went quite low because we want to give the straight line speed some decent top speed on this Mazda. So we went quite low in general on the cambers because it creates a little bit of a faster car. And the rear type, the rear camber, I increased a little bit more just to try and give the rear a little bit more traction when you're putting that power down because I found that with some aggressive inputs on the throttle with it pretty equal, sometimes the rear would step out. With it like this, it felt like there was a little bit more ability to actually stomp on that power. So especially if you're on the control pad, this could be very beneficial to you. You might find it quite nice. Now, toe angle, again, we've gone quite basically as low as I could get away with while keeping some handling on there to get some good top speed. Now, I found that this setup will easily get past the Audi R8s in the race. It, it breezes past them with no effort at all. So I think you're going to enjoy the top speed of this car and how fast it is. They're the settings that I use. Take them down, change them to your liking. It's totally up to you. Now, with regards to the um, differential, the initial torque and the acceleration sensitivity and the braking sensitivity, how I see these is I want to give you some advice with this. So the initial torque and the acceleration sensitivity, I basically use these as if they're a traction control setting. And this is how I kind of work with it. So the higher you go on them, the less restricting they are so the more likely you're going to snap when you put the throttle down or the car's going to oversteer the lower you go the more they're going to stop you and hold you back now i tried 5.5 five, and it felt like the car was almost restricting me on exits of corners we did this live on stream we eventually came to the setting of 10 10 and i have to say it does still feel a little bit restricting but what i will say is the consistency of the setup feels really nice it might lose you a tenth on some of the exits of corners but it's going to gain you that in how consistent the car actually drives throughout the race. Now, another point to note is obviously this is a race setup. I would not use this in time trial. I've designed this setup 100% to try and make you as quick and as consistent in the race as possible. Now, with regards to the initial torque and acceleration sensitivity, I think if you gradually increase one at a time, either the top or the bottom, you know, gradually go up in increments to find your liking. You might find that you might find the faster setup in terms of your drive, how you drive. I think I could go a little bit higher than this, but I've tried to create the setup as baseline as possible and as accessible for as many people as possible. Um, with regards to the braking sensitivity, how I view this is the lower you go on that, the tricky it's going to be into. For the best example of this is turn one at Daytona. When you're turning at braking at the same time, you don't want the car to snap and start oversteering and twitching in the braking zone. So the lower you go on that, the more likely it will be to do that. The higher you go on that, it seems to stabilize that and correct it and keep the car like balanced during the braking zone. So we went up to 51, not as high as I did with the Audi because the Audi obviously MR, this car does not need that type of um, braking sensitivity. And again, you could probably go lower, th lower than that, especially in time trial. I think you can go a lot lower with that braking sensitivity. But again, I've tried to create a very good baseline setup for the race. Now, aero. Again, I've took all the aero off the front because I feel like you don't really need it. It just seems to slow the car down. Um, for time trial, you probably could go a little bit higher. But for this, with the race pace, I feel like I've took it off. Don't really need it. And we've upped the um, rear aero to 575, which I think is bang on the middle line. It seems to give very good traction and also it seems to help the tyres. Now, this setup can do a race run without changing tyres if you really want to go for it. But I'll talk about that strategy and what you need to do 
when we go on to the race guide after I've shown you this setup. But yeah, that is how I did the downforce. I think it's pretty solid. I, I think you're going to like it. The top speed on the gearbox I set to 300 because that will give you very good slipstream and speed. I found that in the slipstream, this car can get over 180 and you will just fly past the Audi R8. It won't be able to, even on a straight, when the Audi R8 went to overtake me in a slipstream, as soon as it broke out of the slipstream, it wasn't able to get past this Mazda. And this Mazda actually feels a lot easier to drive than the Audi R8. So I want to hear your feedback. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this setup. And I'm going to get onto some tips for the race now. And we'll go through some little tips, strategies you can run and hopefully try and get you a little bit faster with your race pace. Okay, so let's get into the race guide. So straight away off the start, what I recommend you doing when your car is on the rolling start is straight away going to mixture six. Now, it may sound really silly, but every little bit of fuel saving you do with time seven is going to be beneficial because this will actually save you more than 1%, which is actually a few temps in terms of pit stop. And that could be the difference between coming out in front of someone or behind someone. So make sure you use mixture six at this start when it's rolling down the straight because it will benefit you in the long term. So starting the race, as soon as the light goes out, we're gonna go straight up to mixture one and we're gonna go into turn one. Now this setup is really stable, so we can be quite aggressive into turn one. And one thing I do is I go into mixture two though, just because you, I believe you're gonna be running tires and not fully up to temperature. Now on GT Sport, that was the case. On GT7, I don't think it's as bad. It feels like the tires are in a better range, but yeah, just be a little bit cautious. So straight away, First thing I always try and do, if you're starting from P1, and this is only if you're starting from the front, is try and break that slipstream. Give it a go. If it happens, you can then run your own race pace. If it doesn't happen and you're starting from the mid pack, you really want to consider how fast people are driving. If you're thinking they are driving too slow for fuel saving, maybe try and get past them and work your way past and get into some other slipstreams that are driving a bit faster because with this setup, you can easily follow on the straight and short shift. This car is actually pretty strong at short shifting. You see, I'm not going to over rev this car, even though I'm even though I'm trying to keep the car behind me out of the slipstream range. I'm not going to overdrive it. You can see I'm shifting about 60 to 70%. That's because this car actually drives really nice with that type of shifting. It doesn't seem to need more. You can actually probably shift this around 50%, 40%, and not actually lose a huge amount on the straight line. So very, very good point to take is don't over rev this car you do not need to burn that fuel this car is pretty solid when it comes to short shifting now again this setup is very strong for here you can see this is the section where i find my setup really nice you can see i'm not even really throughout the whole race try i, I don't think we even came massively over the grass we've seen a lot of people struggling on that course on that corner and i know in the aldi r8 i was struggling but this setup very strong through there so once you've got that slipstream sorted, you can concentrate on your own race pace. We've got the car behind at a decent gap behind. Now, again, if you're behind another car, you're going to use, um, for example, if you're on the slipstream here at this point of the track, get your, your mixture up to like mixtures five, six, as high as you can go while in the slipstream, while keeping the cars behind you, behind you. Um, it's important that you don't let every, everyone go past you by going too slow, but you obviously want to keep as much fuel saving as possible. Now, the reason you do that is because mixture six uses basically no fuel at all. And the more you do this, it's going to benefit you. So we're going to skip now to lap three. We've managed to build that gap up to Wind or Breeze, who is using my setup, by the way. Now, Breeze was having a bit of a hard time throughout the night and throughout the races that I've seen him in because he keeps crashing mainly on this chicane. But he's using my setup on this and he's driving. He's actually really pushing us in this one. You can see he's 1.2 seconds behind. And he is going to keep us honest all the way to the end of this race. You can see taking the chicane absolutely perfect with this setup. It feels so smooth. And this is where I think a lot of people are going to benefit from this setup because it just feels like it can attack them curbs and doesn't get out of shape. It feels very easy to drive on the chicane. And I think you lot are going to be so much more consistent and so much faster when using the setup that I've created here. So yeah, hopefully a lot of people can use it. Give me feedback in the comment section. Let me know what you think of it. Now, overall pace of this setup, it can do... We tried pushing in a couple of races a little bit more aggressive. You can see I'm in mixture two again, doing a bit of fuel saving at the moment because we don't want to use too much fuel. I want to keep wind just out of that slipstream range while trying to save fuel at the same time. But yeah, like I say, with regards to this setup, if you push and you are being a bit more aggressive with the fuel and the revs, it will still do 45.3s or fours in race pace. I managed to do that, I think, in a different race. It will pretty much, you know, confidently do that. But there's no need to really do that if you're not in, you know, in danger of being overtaken you might as well save that fuel and keep the tires in good condition now there are two strat there's actually two strategies that i think are the are viable in this race you can obviously go for the strategy i'm going to do here um, and change tires so in this race we're going to change the tires 
because we got no slipstream now for people that didn't play gt sport you might not be aware of this but when you are in the slipstream it is a, in general a little bit easier to save your tires the reason for this is because you're not being as aggressive on the throttle because of the fuel mixture you can go into mixture free which is putting less power it's basically putting less fuel in your car which is giving you a, a nicer acceleration out of the corner smoother acceleration which isn't putting as much um, pressure on them tires and keeps your tires in better condition also in the braking zones you find that you can brake a little bit earlier keep it nice and smooth you're not having to be as aggressive on the brakes so in general if you are doing that and you can if you can follow someone fast and just save tires behind them what you will find is that you can actually make these tires last the whole race and just going for fuel now the advantage of doing this is you gain about five seconds in the pit stop so with this setup that I'm running here I advise using like minus three to minus four brake bias if you want to try that strategy to try and keep the rear tires in check now remember if you are doing that strategy and you're in that slipstream you will probably want to try and use mixture two for some of the traction zones for like example through this corner here it doesn't seem to lose pace with mixture two you see I'm always I'm using mixture two very often through that first sector there and out of this corner as well because Mixture 2 doesn't, in traction zones, it feels pretty good. It doesn't lose you a massive amount of time. And you can see this setup seems really stable with the traction zones anyway. So I think we can make that the strategy work. For example, if I start P5 and I'm behind someone fast who's not on that strategy, I will probably give this strategy a go where I just save my rear tires, look after the fuel, and then do not change tires because I think it might be possible to do a better overall finishing time. However, if you're at the front, I think this is a better way to do it you know, drive 80%. Don't go 100% because you're just going to burn too much fuel and the car behind might be saving fuel and you'll get back in your slipstream and you'll have a situation where once they're in your slipstream, they can just dictate when they overtake you with this very long slipstream and zone on this track. But you can see we've managed to get up into um, the pit stop phase nearly now. We're going to skip ahead to that now in the race. Now, this is where the Mazda really comes into its own because most people in the other cars will have to pit lap five. And you can see I've been driving this reasonably aggressive. I've not been going on a full fuel saving strategy. And we've managed to go to lap six and we've still got 6% fuel in the car. Now you can get seven laps out of this car quite comfortably if you do a bit more fuel saving, like if you've got that slipstream. So like I say, if you can make that strategy work, I think a no tire change would actually gain you quite a lot because it's a five second quicker pit stop if you don't change tires. Now you can see, I've gone in the pits 2% more, um, less fuel than Breeze behind us. So he's obviously been doing a bit more fuel saving, but we did have a little bit of a gap to him. So we're going to make sure that we don't put too much fuel in and make the same mistake that we made against Super GT. So I made sure I didn't overfuel this time. You can see I'm going to actually stop pretty much dead on the white line. That should enable me to come out reasonably in, in regards to slipstream. He shouldn't be right behind me and then I can dictate the pace again. So you can see again, as we come out the pits, we've got um, wind just outside the slipstream range he's pretty much hanging in it now the advantage here is again like i say i think that when you're at this type of position if you drive aggressively you can just keep them at a certain point and just do the fuel saving where you like and it should help you out but you can see we've come out the pits might like quite a bit ahead of p3 and p4 so again this is why this car is very very strong because we've gained three or four seconds just by fuel and i really recommend everyone give this car a go if you haven't tried it if you haven't bought it go and buy this car because it's going to improve your overall time massively so i'm going to go through a bit of a track guide a talk along track guide we're not going to go in depth on this in terms of pointing out um you know slowing it down just going to give you a bit of a track guide to end this video to help you out as much as i can so we're going to go to the final lap where i actually had to push a little bit more okay so the reason we had to push for this last lap was because we had breeze otherwise known as wind right behind us pushing with my setup on also driving us to the limit so yeah we're on mixture two going into turn one we're gonna have to do that for fuel you can see we're pretty much dead on what we need first mark you're gonna look for on brake on the braking over turn one is that little board there's a little board on the right side that indicates for yellow or blue flag so try and keep the car as tight as you can into this corner and then just get on the throttle nice and early this is completely flat out and then you're going to look for a braking zone i break just before the lamppost on the left hand side you can see there just in between them two lampposts that's the reference i use for the braking zone keep it nice and tight get on the power as early as you can try and get the car squared off for that corner because if you get on the power too early you understand why if you get on the curb you can lose the rear end now into this corner now we're going to use the tarmac on our left side as a bit of a braking reference you see just in the middle of that tarmac on the left brake quite aggressively again down to second gear quite late in the corner get the car squared off on the throttle nice and early and now we're going to go into the next braking, braking zone which we're going to use as a reference the little bit of start of the tarmac on the right hand side just as that tarmac starts get on the brake aggressively 
and then work your way through this long left hand corner being careful on the throttle all the way through that corner because the car can easily snap if you're too aggressive with some cars with this setup though i'm pretty happy to say that it feels pretty nice as you get on the power through there now as we work our way all the way up to this corner this again you're going to break there's a number one and two board in the middle of that is another warning sign you're going to see as we come through there warning sign there you're going to break pretty much dead on that down to fourth gear and then as we come into the eight corner down to third gear and just look how smooth it is through there it's so nice through that section this setup i think you are going to absolutely love this car when you're driving it and like i say let me know in the comment section from this point on it's completely flat out you can see we managed to go completely flat throttle down and we've got enough fuel to push all the way to the end and you can see that wind behind us i'm not sure if he runs out of fuel here because you're going to see as we come to the finishing line it looks like he fades off there and i think he actually ran out of fuel our fuel was fine we had two percent left so could have actually gone a little bit more aggressive and we finished that race in 1808 which is six seconds quicker than what we were doing um, a couple of days before so i think you lot are gonna be massively improved with this setup let me know in the comment section what you think of the setup how it drives let me know all that stuff subscribe to the channel and hit that like button i will be back with more of these videos thanks again for watching everyone